During this video series, I will look at four different cases for using the sign test. In this video, we're going to look at case number two. The sign test is a hypothesis test for an increasing or decreasing trend. This was a test that was proposed by Cox and Stewart and so is known as the Cox-Stewart test for trend. They proposed this test in 1955 as a, quote, quick test of trend. This method is to determine if fluctuations across time represent a trend or random fluctuations. We humans are really good at detecting patterns that aren't actually there. We may think that we see an upward trend or a downward trend among data that go up and down. But when data go up and down, are we really detecting a general upward or downward trend? Or are these just random fluctuations? Let's look at some examples of when we might be interested in trend. What about if we're tracking the weekly ratings of a student's behavior, or perhaps the behavior of all the students in a class? We can take these weekly ratings, and certainly sometimes they'll go up, sometimes they'll go down, but can we detect a general trend? Is the behavior getting better and better, or is the behavior conversely getting worse and worse? What about if there's reason to suppose that the amount of rainfall in a city is going down? It is unlikely to go down every single year. However, is there a general trend? Even though sometimes it goes up a little or down a little, is there a general downward trend? Obviously, we would like to know that. How about if you're a podcaster and you're tracking the monthly number of podcast listeners? You want to know if those podcast listeners are increasing or decreasing. They're going to, again, go up and down, but is there a general trend upward, as you might hope? Consider a mystery guest dropping in unknown to the hotel in order to provide a service rating for the hotel. The management of the hotel would like to know that the service ratings are going up and not going down. Or what about someone who's dealing with high blood pressure? You take readings across time, they're sometimes going to be a little higher, sometimes a little lower, but is there a general downward trend? Perhaps one is taking a blood pressure drug in hopes that the trend will be downward, and you would like to check that. Now let's consider how we would set up this test. A number of observations, let's call it n, are recorded in order across a unit of time using a scale that is either ordinal that is, ordered categories, or actual quantities. Here's an example of recording values, in this case 15 of them. That is, these are 15 measurements taken across time, given here in order of time, starting with 14, moving to 17, and so on, all the way to the last measurement that is taken as 33. Now, in order to conduct the test, we are going to first calculate a value, which I will call C. That is the number of time periods in which we took measurements divided by 2 if n is even, or the number of time periods in which we took measurements plus 1 divided by 2 if n is odd. In the current example, we have 15 measurements. That means that n is odd, so C will be 15 plus 1, or 16, divided by 2, or 8. Keep that in mind. C is calculated here to be 8. We're also going to indicate x sub i as the ith measurement when the measurements are in order of time of measurement. So here, x sub 1 is 14, x sub 2 is 17, x sub 3 is 22, and so on, all the way to x sub 15, which is 33. Now let's see how to do the test. We are going to start with i equals 1 and compare x sub i plus c to x sub i. If x sub i plus c is greater than x sub i, we will give that a plus sign. If x sub i plus c is not greater than x sub i, we will give it a minus sign. We'll make all comparisons of the i plus c and i measures and then we'll record t, the number of plus signs, and we will use t to conduct the sign test that we have learned about. One note of caution, the size of the sign test here is the number of comparisons, not the number of measures. So let's try this with the data that we looked at before. 
Remember that we calculated C to be 8. So first we're going to have x sub 1 plus 8, or x sub 9, meaning the ninth value, and we're going to compare it to the first value, x sub 1. So we're going to compare 26 to 14. If 26 is greater than 14, which obviously it is, then we're going to give it a plus sign. We're now going to compare x sub 2 plus 8, or 10, to x sub 2. So we're going to compare the 10th value to the second value, and then the 11th value to the third value, and so forth, all the way until we're at the end. And if we do that, what we're going to find is, of the seven comparisons, seven of them are plus signs. That is, every single comparison here is a plus sign. So even though as you look across this data over time, you see sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down. I have from 14 to 17 goes up, 17 to 22 goes up, 22 to 20 goes down. The general trend that we are detecting is that there is an upward trend. And in fact, all of the comparisons we made indicate an upward trend. The null hypothesis is that the probability that x sub i plus c is greater than x sub i, that is the probability that a later value in time is greater than an earlier value in time, is equal to 0 0.50. Why 0 0.50? As we've discussed before, this would indicate that whether or not you go up or down is very much like flipping a coin. It's just by chance. When we do the sign test for these particular data, we get that the probability that t is greater than or equal to 7 is 0 0.0078, so the p-value is very small, and we will conclude that there is an upward trend.